Hello, I'm Tooele County Commissioner Sean Milne, filling in for Chad Booth on the county seat. To say that 2020 has been a disruptive year to large gatherings and events would be an understatement. So we thought it'd be an interesting story, since it is county fair season, to take a look at some of the events going on in Utah's counties and what the impacts of the pandemic have been on them. So stay tuned, we're going to hear from Derek as he gets together with some youth to talk about their programs and how they've been affected. There's a lot of talk about the new normal as we all try to navigate our way out of the pandemic. But what about our children? Some parents feel pressure to provide their kids with a, well, a normal normal. For Eric Turner and his family, that opportunity has come from raising livestock. It was something for my kids to be able to get out of the house and have a purpose, have something that they needed to do. And it, it was just wonderful. We spent more time together as a family down there at the barn doing the livestock project because there wasn't anything else to do. Programs through 4-H and Future Farmers of America teach kids through doing with a focus on agriculture. And while some activities have gone virtual, you just can't raise livestock on a computer. It's definitely been different. We've done a lot of virtual and online things, um, but I think we've tried to keep it as normal as we can. We are very hands-on with our programs with the Do Reflect Apply, and we like to have our kids there. And at first, we just had to shut our programs down as we reevaluated, and we just took a pause. Then we took our programs and put them online. As well as trying to help these kids raise livestock and giving them a place to go to be able to show these on animals off as well as being able to sell these animals that they put so much work into. Other programs have been had to have virtual sales or they've done virtual shows, which is a little bit more complicated because you like to be able to judge the animals against each other. Today's actually the auction, and this is where people in the community, business owners, individuals will come and support these kids and actually buy their product to consume. So letting these kids be a part of the agriculture industry and producing a product that's worthy for um, consumers, I think for them to have to go through those challenges and still produce a product, I think is only going to make them better in the end. I'm excited that the kids get to reap the rewards now from all the hard work that they've put in. Yeah, it's been different, but everything's just a little slower. I don't go to as many competitions. Just makes everything feel so much more normal. I think it's nice because we haven't been able to do very much stuff, and this is one thing that I look forward, look, was looking forward to being able to do this year. It pays off after you put in all this work, all these hours throughout the year. You're with them like every single day. You have to raise them. You have to keep them alive. If you're interested in teaching your kids those life lessons of raising something, having a responsibility, a work ethic, a budget, uh, you know, you can teach just on and on the lessons go on of raising livestock, then I can't think of a better way to raise kids than doing this. 2020 will likely go down as the year where we lost our sense of control. But it may also be the year where we discover what's important isn't all that distant. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Thanks, Derek, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back. Today we're joined by a panel of guests to talk about this unusual season. We're joined by Mike Newton of the Morgan County Council, Greg Miles of Duchesne County Commission, and Dave Heaton, the Public Information Officer of the Southwest Utah Public Health Department. And I'm Sean Milne, filling in again for Chad Booth with the county seat. So gentlemen, it has been a really unusual year, and in order to try to keep some sense of normalcy, some communities have grappled with the idea of still holding some events, and others, uh, we, we know many examples, throughout our state as well as the rest of the world that have had to cancel. Uh, Mike, why don't we start with you? So. You guys have had a couple of events that you've had to cancel and you've modified others? We have, so unfortunately, we made the tough decision to cancel our 100 year tradition of a county fair. Um, we were still able to hold the junior livestock show and auction and we had unprecedented, unprecedented attendance at that uh, show and at the auction itself. In fact, um, the, the auction sales numbers were higher than they've ever been, which is really fortunate. That is, that's great that the community came out and supported. 
despite the uncertainty. And Greg, how about you? We're, we're moving forward with our fair. We're actually in fair week right now. So the concert will be tonight. Um, there was a lot of thought and preparation that went into deciding whether to move forward or not. And, and visiting with, with state officials, uh, with our local health district, not to say that there haven't been modifications. <laughs> we've made a considerable amount of modifications in, in the fair. Um, we've canceled several events that we felt like we probably just couldn't make them work with the current situation. Um, and and I, it also is fair to say that every event has med, been modified because of COVID-19. But Dave, over to you real quick. In Southwest Utah, uh, what's the situation been for you guys? The five counties that we cover in our health district, all five counties are going ahead with their county fairs uh, starting this month and going up into early September. Uh, that includes Washington, Iron, Garfield, Beaver, and Kane counties. And if you too, like Commissioner Greg Miles was telling us, had to modify some of those expectations and maybe some of the traditions. Right, yeah, I think people are eager to go forward and maintain some continuity, but uh, looking at the reality that we are still in the middle of a, a surging uh, new virus, a pandemic situation that, that is very real. And so it's a maintaining a balance between uh, moving ahead with these events that mean a lot to our communities while still protecting the health of our communities at the same time. So Mike, as we come back to you and your de uh, decision to cancel your county fair, tell us some of the conversations that took place with undoubtedly other community volunteer groups, other leaders. Starting the summer, of course, we didn't know where this pandemic would lead. And so we, we continued planning the fair up until about three weeks before the actual event was supposed to take place. So until about the, the uh, second week in July. And all along, we kept in contact with those groups that, that affiliate with the fair and, and uh, participate in that activity. And uh, we, we spent a lot of time discussing what things would look like if we were able to hold the event, what events could happen, what maybe couldn't. Um, we, we kept in close contact with the health department. And our health department, much like I believe all health departments in the state, has been working 24-7 to try to, to deal with the pandemic. Um, one of their biggest issues and concerns has been contact tracing. So if someone does come down with COVID, they, they trace the contacts that that individual has had to ensure that others are aware that they have been exposed and then also to make sure that they get tested to try to prevent that others from, from being exposed. And our health department ultimately um, told us if we were to hold a county fair, um, they did not have the ability to do contact tracing beyond what they were currently doing. And so the burden of contact tracing would have been placed on our fair board, our volunteers that, that handle that. Knowing that that's a, a, a group of volunteers and they put in a tremendous amount of time and, and effort to holding a fair each year, we knew that that was going to be very difficult and, and a very big ask. And so um, in pondering that and in discussing with the fair board, they determined that the best course of action was going to be to cancel this year's activities. Um, and we will, of course, resume next year. And, and our intention is to be even bigger and better than we have been. Well, no doubt that would have been a very trying time. And, um, you know, a lot of us sympathize, you know, going through that, being a county commissioner myself, we've had a number of events cancel, some postpone, some that are still waiting to see, right? So, Greg, you guys decided, Commissioner Miles, to proceed with your county fair, but you noted that you've had some significant modifications. What have some of those been? Well, we just, there, there are, I think, five or six that we just canceled. You know, like I, like I mentioned, that we, we didn't feel like we could um, take care of our, our obligation to keep the public safe, you know, with mitigation efforts. And, and it would have been a nightmare to try and make them happen under the current circumstances. But Do you others, mind sharing what some of those events may have been? Um, there were a couple of events that were planned to be at the local high school. And because of state requirements and the school district not really wanting large events to happen, um, we decided the events that were planned at, at school district facilities, we would move try to move to the event center or fairgrounds and and some of those we we didn't have a facility that we could we could facilitate those and so we ended up canceling those some some events happened before the fair and 
because we were really in the heat of the of the pandemic, you know, with un, unknowns and and all the variables that were happening with with COVID nineteen, those were canceled. But after talking with the state, you know, and and with our local health department, and which I need to add, they've been very supportive. Uh, Tri County Health has been excellent. We've we've met with them a number of times. They've helped us come up with ideas, you know, and, and given us feedback on on the plan for each event, on sanitizing and and um, modifying our events to to keep people safe. Now, Tri County, what are the counties that they serve? So Tri County covers Duchesne, Uinta, and Daggett counties. Okay, a well, very tight cluster there. And have your case counts been relatively low? Relatively low. We've we've had. Uh, a spike just in the last few weeks. Um, they've kind of trickled in, uh, you know, not, not 200 in one day, but we've had a few uh, upticks in the count. Um, but I think we are kind of at a plateau currently. Anything that you can attribute that to because you guys have been fairly open? I think, and I, I don't have the knowledge firsthand, but I think there were a couple of, of trainings that happened within the county um, where some people may have been exposed. Hmm. Like uh, corporate trainings where folks got together yes. in groups? Okay. And, and what about Morgan County, Mike? Uh, have you guys been relatively spared in your numbers or are you seeing a spike as well? We have been. Um, Morgan is part of the Weber Morgan Health District. Um, and the vast majority of cases have been on the Weber County side. Uh, thankfully, we've had no deaths and our case count numbers have been, uh, currently we have about 12 open cases and it's it's been in that range in terms of open cases for for some time, several weeks. Um, so overall, we've been fairly um, well off in terms of numbers in our county itself. Well, that's great. So let's come over to Dave. Dave, in the Southwest, you guys have seen a spike recently, correct? We have, especially in Washington County, where most of our, con our population is concentrated. We even showed up on some national maps for hotspots, which was a bit concerning. Uh, we have noticed, though, over the past week or so, uh, a definite um, noted decline in case numbers as far as our, our seven-day rolling average. That seems to be also a trend in Utah and even nationally in some areas that aren't hot spots currently. And so that that could be promising. We, we would love to hope that we're maybe on the other side of a surge, but we're, we're withholding celebrating anytime soon until we see a more sustained period of time go by where we see those declining numbers. Uh, in our smaller counties, in Iron County, it's been kind of a plateau the whole time, an average of seven cases a day. In our rural counties, Beaver County was was uh, really enjoying several weeks when the pandemic was getting going everywhere else of being one of the only counties in the United States that wasn't seeing any cases. Um, and it seemed like corresponding about the time that they went to level green, along with Garfield and Kane counties, we saw uh, cases start to show up in all three, but not more than you would expect for the population. Excellent. Well, we're, we've got to take a commercial break. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about what some of those modifications have been in your counties to hold the events that you've proceeded with when we come back on the county seat. Welcome back. Again, I'm Sean Milne filling in for Chad Booth on the county seat. And we're joined here by a panel of three gentlemen talking about the county fair season and some of the challenges in order to proceed with some and deciding regrettably to ca have to cancel others. So, uh, Mr. Newton, y you decided to ca cancel the county fair in, in the overall sense, but kept the livestock auction. Now, I'm sure that's been great for the kids. Tell us a little bit more as to why Morgan County decided to retain that part. So our livestock committee is a separate group from the county fair um, board, and the livestock group knew that young people had acquired animals early on in the season. Typically they acquire those in, in late spring, some even prior to that. And they spend a lot of time raising those animals and, and getting to know those animals so that they can show them. I myself showed sheep when I was a, a, a youth at the Morgan County Fair as well. Um, so it's near and dear to my heart. And those young people, they put a lot of money and time into those animals and our livestock committee knew that that was important to them. And without the opportunity to sell those, those animals at the auction, which brings a premium, 
Um, it's much more than you might pay for an animal at, at the packer or at... Uh, yeah, all of us that have been to one know how that works. Yeah. Exactly. It was important to, to still hold that. And our youth, um, we have a, a huge group of youth. My understanding is there was about 196 um, youth that showed livestock at the show and, and sold at the, at the uh, sale. So Dave, over to you. You'd mentioned that there have been some modifications that within your health district of those counties in order to hold certain events. Now, you've canceled the Shakespearean Festival, correct? Or, or it has been canceled, not you, but it's been canceled. But there are others that have continued. Right, yeah, depending on the festival or, or, or the event, um, each each of the counties has to kind of look after what their, uh, what their resources are, uh, kind of what the population is in the mood for, and also protecting the local healthcare system as far as hospitalizations and, and those type of resources. So as, as far as county fairs go, currently, in yellow or green stages, which our, our counties are included in, large events can be held with certain precautions, especially if they're outdoor and have lots of room. And so adjustments have been made, encouraging social distancing, encouraging mask wearing, uh, traffic control, encouraging use of hand sanitizer, discouraging you know, uh, high touch areas being visited frequently. And so uh, with those precautions in place, I think uh, our county leaders have, have chosen to move forward to see how these events go. It's interesting so far in our district, we've had several, uh, even within the last few weeks, larger events that we've, we've been concerned about. Some are informal, some are formal, whether it's a, um, a, an organized protest or a concert. Uh, so far, we haven't seen evidence of any significant outbreaks from large events or gatherings at this point. Um, we see them more in places like a correctional facility or care centers and mostly from our positive cases or from other people that are already known contacts. And so these are people that they're having close contact with, whether it's in a household or a workplace. In Utah, we're really trying to be driven by data, not fear or politics, according to whatever local district or county's needs are. Great, so when we come back from this commercial break, I'd like to go to Commissioner Miles to hear your unique perspective being both an elected county leader as well as a member of your health board. Welcome back to the county seat. Again, I'm Sean Milne filling in today for Chad Booth, and we've been joined by three fellas that, uh, here we are in county fair season, and so much that's been affected with our events during 2020. So Commissioner Greg Miles, um, you have a unique role being both a county commissioner, an elected leader, as well as serving as a board member on your Tri-County Board of Health. Uh, tell us how those conversations have uh, taken place for those three counties as you've considered modifying some of your events and because of your other hat, how as a county commissioner you have modified, modified some of those events to continue? Each commissioner from each of the three counties has a responsibility. You know, someone from the commission sits on, on the Tri-County Health Board and um, I think as we've had different events come up you know, I mentioned Tri-County Health has been supportive of our fair. I think they've also been very supportive of other events that are taking place. You know, it, it's not the idea of Tri-County Health to shut down an event that they want to, you know, try and keep things moving where we can. It's been an eye-opener for me, I guess, as a newly elected official to see how things work and the background work that goes on at the health department and the expert advice that we receive from from doctors and um, scientists that, that give us a perspective to be able to make good, sound decisions. Sure, and, and that's great. I, I have to admit, you know, my role uh, on the County Commission and some of the events that we've regrettably had to cancel as well, I can identify with all the perspectives that have been shared in today's program. And we've been able to thankfully keep a few. So on some of these events, uh, Commissioner Miles, what are some of the steps you've taken in order to increase safety for contagion's sake and still been able to keep some of the events? So, you know, social distancing is a big consideration and we, we reduced the number of tickets that we would allow to be sold for an event. Um, we sanitize several times during the day. We've, we've actually scheduled our building and grounds department to take care of that. Um, they, they wash and sanitize the bleachers after every event. Um, we, we've also have a weird dynamic right now. We're under construction on a warm-up arena for our event center. And so with COVID that delayed uh, supplies getting to us. And so that's been another wrench in things. But, you know, sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. 
and and um, just try and keep remind everybody to wear a mask, encourage people to wear a mask. I'm sure there are a lot of other things that I've forgotten, but those well, that's, are... that's quite all right, but we're, we're grateful to hear that, right? I mean, for consumer confidence and for members of our respective communities, they want to make sure that we are doing what we can on our part as a facility. But as I come back to Dave, close us out, if you wouldn't mind, Dave, on what we ought to remind as community leaders, as well as someone like yourself, the PIO for a health district, what are some of the things that citizens should continue to do to ensure their safety while they go about enjoying some of these local events? Yeah, well, some of those points were, were, were mentioned and those are right on. What's really vital is social distancing. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, much like influenza, but it seems to spread a lot faster than influenza and can have some pretty serious consequences. If you get COVID-19 in Utah, you have over a 99% chance of survival, but it's folks over 60 and people with, uh, compromised immune systems or underlying health issues that kind of bear the brunt of ending up in the hospital or even fatalities at times. And so we just want to emphasize that as people go out into public, what you're really trying to do is protect those vulnerable people and protect our hospitals. And so if you keep your distance from people that aren't in your household, if you go out in public and wear a mask and remember that the main purpose of wearing a mask is to protect other people in case you're infected and don't know it. Um, stay home if you are sick, uh, get tested if you have any symptoms, and uh, just remember that I think one strength that we have in all of our counties in Utah is there tends to be a sense of community and compassion. And this is a time where we can really step up and keep moving with some of these events as modified as they are, but still try to do the best we can to protect the vulnerable among us. Well, thank you very much, Dave. We really appreciate that great advice on how we can all do our part to stay safe. Thank you to our guests and thank you to you, the viewer, for joining us today on the county seat. Remember, the government that's closest to you is the most effective and efficient. And if you feel like you've learned good information today, and I hope you have, please share it on social media. And until next time, thank you for joining the County Seat. Thank you for watching The County Seat. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on the program and happenings around Utah.